What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 39 of On Shape. What we were doing today is taking our box that we made uh, the day of pre video before, and then we're now going to throw in our holes for the side walls and then our crankshaft. But while we're doing this, I want to do this in parts that are still uh, viable, what we have in the real world. So I'm going to be very cognizant of when I'm making my crankshaft that we have individual pieces that represent stuff we can have and manipulate in uh, real life. So the first thing I'm going to do here is drill my hole out for my crankshaft. So I'm going to click on sketch. I'm going to click on this right plane right here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, draw some construction lines that allow me to find the middle of my box. Oh, let me fix that. Let's try that again. We got two lines right here. Now what I'm going to do first is right click on them and make them construction lines. And so what you see here is uh, these two lines are now dotted. And this allows me to put a single point right on the cross section of those two lines. Okay. Now with this point, you could make a hole or you can make a circle, but um, in either case, you know, both loads, roads lead to Rome there. Since it's not gonna be threaded, I tend to just, while I'm here, just go ahead and make a circle and we're gonna extrude it out. Okay, so the thickness of, our sorry, the, the diameter of our hole is gonna be the thickness of our dowel rod. So we're gonna use 3 16 inch of a dowel rod uh, and it'll automatically be constrained to that middle there. Things look good, so I'm going to keep moving on. Now let's uh, go ahead and extrude uh, this middle part right here. So hit Shift E for extrude. We're going to extrude this hole. It's going to be a remove, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this on through. Now the thing that I imagine a lot of students are not going to miss is that this hole is actually not going through my left side. So what we're going to do is we're going to just click Merge with All, and it'll go ahead and take it out there. We hit the green check mark, and we are now good to go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make our crankshaft. So what I actually I'm going to use I'm going to use that sketch again that we just used to um, cut our holes out. We're going to extrude that sketch again. Oh no, no, sorry. There we go, extrude. I was at the sketch. So we're going to extrude this sketch again. So we're going to extrude sketch four. We're going to, uh, instead of a blind, it's going to be, um, let's do a second end position. So the first end position is going to be some distance. The second end position is going to be some distance further out. And the reason we have to do this is because we want my first uh, end position to be uh, this is going to be a quarter inch outside of the right side of the box. And we also want it a quarter inch out of the left side of the box. So I'm going to put uh, 0 0.4, sorry, 4.75, because that's going to be our total width plus a quarter inch on the other side. All right, well, this is going to be a new. We're going to make this a new piece. We hit the green check mark, and we're good to go. Okay, what do we do next from here? So I'm going to create a sketch that's going to go on the end of this uh, dowel rod we have so far, and it's going to be the end cap for my dowel rod. So let's go ahead and do an inside circle and a second circle. The inside diameter is going to be a eighth inch of a sorry uh, three sixteenths of an inch again because we want it to match uh, the snug fit for the dowel rod. And then that outside edge, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just give it, uh, let's do um, half an inch. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and create our end cap for our automata. All right, and then instead of a blind, let's do up to face up to that face, and this is going to be a new. Now the reason it's going to be new is because uh, this end cap right here is going to be made out of a different part than our dowel rod. 
usually I've seen these be laser cut. Uh, however, we're probably just going to uh, do something in the realm of a 3D printed part uh, or something a student can make on their own. So as I'm going through, let's go ahead and rename some of these parts. So this is going to be our crankshaft. Uh, let's say axle. And then let's do crank shaft cap. All right, both these, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, edit the appearance for them. Let's go and give them a nice wood color. That looks good. All right, all we need to do is now add in our part to the other side and throw in our assemblies to it as well. So click on sketch. We're gonna to go to this plane over here, right click, hit view normal two. And we're gonna do the same thing. However, instead of an outside circle, we're going to do something a little bit different. And that's because we're gonna include the handle that's going to be for our uh, crankshaft. So let's go back to your view normal two. Let's do two circles. Let's do a, a bigger circle. Let's do a circle with, uh, let's do one inch in diameter. All right, and then let's also do a circle that is one point five inches away, and this is just going to be where our handle for our crankshaft is going to go. So let's go ahead and just connect these two. Now you can see as I'm drawing these lines, some automatic constraints are being put in. Uh, let's go ahead and put this one in right here. We're gonna go to right here. If you didn't draw this very well, um, we're gonna go ahead and put in a tangent constraint. So this line is gonna be tangent to that circle. This line is gonna be tangent to this circle. And what that does is make sure that the transition between these two circles here is gonna be pretty smooth. Okay, and dimension this other inside hole to be uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna say we're looking good for the most part. Let's go ahead and trim up this up a little bit. That way I don't need all of these parts. And we're gonna go ahead and extrude this piece on out a quarter inch. That's going to be a new because it's not going to be added to our dowel rod and so we've got our other hub cap here so I'm going to say let's rename this as handle base. Okay and then one last thing and we are done for our creation of our parts or designing them all we need to do now is assemble. So I'm going to reuse this sketch to make my handle, which is going to stick out. Let's make it stick out 1.5 inches. And then we are good to go. Let's rename this last piece as handle. All right. I always wonder if I'm spelling things right, like double checking during a video. Uh, I always swear it's just something, sometimes it just looks a little bit off. And so handle looked a little bit weird to me. All right, let's uh, go ahead and change or edit the appearance of this handle. And it's gonna be made out of the same dowel rod that our other piece down here is gonna be made out of. So let's make sure that I at least choose the same type of brown. Okay, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially created our box and then our crankshaft. The next thing we're gonna have to do is assemble it. So let's go ahead and put it in our assembly. All right, we're gonna click insert. We're gonna insert craft shake handle, or axle, cap, handle, and our uh, handle base. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and assemble some of these things, but we have to be cognizant of what is exactly going on. So the first thing is that this axle is actually going to be rotating around or inside our automata. So I'm gonna click on Revolute. We're gonna revolve this end on 
this end right here. So if I click play, it doesn't really show me if it does anything. Not really. So once I start to attach pieces on it, it might be easier to see. But we're going to offset this just a little bit. And we're going to offset this uh, negative 0.25. Oh, maybe 2.5. I thought I was going to be positive. I was wrong. There we go. And that's because we want it to stick out just a little bit to the left. And that way when I put the end cap on there, it'd be nice and flush. Okay. All right. Next thing is going to be, we're going to do some fastened baits. And so what we're going to have then is, you know, this is going to be fastened onto this piece right here. There we go. Hit the green check mark, and we're already looking like we're in business. I did notice I don't I didn't change my handle base, so I'm gonna go back and fix that real quick. Let's go back to our handle base. Let's edit that appearance and let's give it a nice brown color. There we go. Alrighty. And let's do a couple more fastens, and I believe we're gonna be done for today. We're gonna say that the edge of this is gonna be fastened to the edge of this. Hit the check mark and we're looking good. And the last thing, but surely not least, is going to be the edge of this is going to be fastened to. Uh oh, I'm having a hard time doing this part here. And so there's a couple of different ways you could do this actually. And so I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get this right side and make it inactive. And that allows me to rotate this around and then pick on the inside of this circle right here. There's a couple different ways you could have done it, absolutely, um, but I want to show kind of that neat little thing we could do there. Okay, we hit check mark and we're looking good. So the only thing we should have is truly one revolute mate, and that should be just the axle willing to spin um, uh, in, inside the box. Since everything is fastened to it, it should rotate pretty smoothly. And I find this just a little bit funny. Let's loop it and we'll step down our steps just a little bit. And it should speed up our handle a little bit. Okay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially done with our box and our crankshaft. And soon we're gonna talk about cams for a little bit and then throw our cams in here. At this point, things are going to be a little bit different for you. So if you're going to use four cams or five or three and what kind of cams you're going to use, my video is going to start to look different from yours. And so uh, pay attention. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along. If you have any questions like usual, absolutely throw them down in the comment section. I would love to help you out. Or uh, reach me out through any of the variety of means you can find me. These videos have been fun. If they've been helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps out a ton more than you think. I would love to see uh, the 1,000 subscriber count by the end of the school year if we can get there. All right, you guys are awesome. Until then, I'll catch you later. See ya.